how are you? So, we're a new members club that's just opened up in Singapore. Um, the design is clearly one of the heroes of the space. Uh, this is our 25 million year old uh, rose quartz crystal. Uh, Timothy Olsen states that if you touch it, your teeth will get whiter, your hair gets longer, maybe you live a little bit longer. Follow me into the spot. So this is May, this is our spa. So we have, we offer uh, nail therapy, foot and flexology, barber services for both men and women. We have full service showers, changing rooms, over the So as a member, we're trying to enhance your everyday life. You don't need to get a service to use the shower facility. So and as you can tell by the music, it's quite a hip space. You can order a cocktail, quite social. Back here we have four massage therapy rooms. Um, we also have a physio coming as well soon. Sorry. Back this way. We got cut off. <laughs> so I'll take you back around the other way. Usually you can have a little, there's a there's a secret entrance into the recovery room, but we'll go there in just a moment. First, I want to show you uh, this space here is called the Double. Uh, basically, during the day, it is a um, community cafe, essentially. So, coffees, meetings, um, a food offering, which grab and go concept. Um, and then at night, these bird cages kind of face back in towards the bar, and you have these. Um, drapes that come out of their hiding spot and kind of swallow the space up and it turns into this high energy cocktail bar. So at night time, right now, we'd be in a home. So if you come through to here, I'll show you that little space that's just off the spa. So we're pulling this, probably just get this angle, for the recovery room. Uh, essentially uh, just a place to decompress. Um, after a spa service, or if you've just had a really bad day at work, you can come in here and hang out, not see anybody. We uh, there's an honor bar in we there. We also have a viewer who's asking, where is this place? Uh, Singapore, uh, Robertson Key. Is that good? <laughs> We're located in the intercontinental on the third level. Uh, right this way, over to our workspace, we have some funky phone booths, in case you need privacy. Yeah. In case you need some privacy, uh, if you're on a phone call with sensitive information or yelling at someone, of course, too. <laughs> Sometimes I come in here and I eat my lunch. <laughs> so, and then this is Bardot, this is our co working space. Uh, we have a hot desking station in the middle, dedicated desks on each side, and then there's a 10 person office back there. The, the co-working space package comes with uh, two meeting rooms, there's a pantry back there, uh, and then they have access to this formal boardroom meeting, which also acts as a private dining room. So in the evening if people book it for a private dining room. Yeah, quite a stunning space. So we really kind of change the, change the decor uh, for the private dining as well. So there's also, there's a few different features in here. There's an event going on next door, so I can't poke in, but the wall here retracts to the, to the space next door. Exactly. And then the wall between the double and the studio is also retractable. So it can be one long event space. We've done a few events. It's quite a lovely area to hold like a... Absolutely. So Chef is all about seasonal, reinventing the classics, right? So it, during the morning, he uh, puts out the sauce, danishes, muffins, his energy bar, and then at around 11.30 comes the lunch spread. So, uh, but it's quite popular. So anyone in the club, can either whether they're dining here or in the lounge, can come here, help himself, mm -hmm. and then go anywhere in the club. But we also offer a full all-day dining menu. Um, artisanal, 
artisanal coffee shop, I guess. <laughs> so uh, I'm a latte kind of girl. So, but I do I do respect what he does. Um, and then upstairs, or I'm sorry, up here in the front of the club, we have the lounge. Where there's another bar, so the lounge, which I'm taking you to right now, is the living room of the uh, space. Uh, we find that a lot of people, a lot of members, have been using it as a workspace, uh, and then it turns into more of a social space at night. Hi, Chef. Hello. So, we have the lounge. So this is all day dining. Uh, we had a bunch of people here last night enjoying themselves for cocktails, so it's multi functional as well. Um, it's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Timothy Alton has been collecting teapots. I'm going to pass you guys off to our executive chef, Colin. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, thank you. Hey guys, how are you doing? Let me take you into the kitchen. I'll show you. This is the, this is the wine cellar. Um, beautiful, really nice wines in there. Uh, just mind your step. Okay. Say hi to the kitchen team. All my kitchen team are here. There you go. So, so what I'm going to do for you today, I'm going to give you uh, just a few dishes of what, uh, what we're going to be doing at 1880. Uh, a couple of my signature dishes. So we're going to start off with a uh, cured salmon dish. So this is um, Norwegian salmon. Uh, we cure it in 60% uh, 60, uh, 60 sugar, 40% salt for one and a half hours. Then we wash it off. And then we dress it with uh, uh, usual dressing. Just a nice citrus, citrus dressing. So it keeps it nice and, uh, nice, nice and, nice and citrusy. Gives it a nice glaze. And then we season it um, with uh, toasted fennel seeds, uh, coriander seeds, um, some uh, white peppercorns, and star anise. All right, so just a light seasoning for that. So the food's basically, it's, it's all about, you know, casually elegant food. It's all about letting the, all the produce speak for itself, you know. It's all about really fresh produce. So here we have some Akura caviar. So the Akura caviar, we soak it and uh, agadashi, which is a Japanese seaweed stock. Uh, we soak that for about uh, one and a half hours. And basically that just flavors the, uh, the cura caviar, which is salmon eggs, and it gives that umami flavor. And then we give some uh, compressed uh, pineapple. So we use a Del Monte Gold pineapple, which is really, really juicy, really, really sweet, okay? So this is really just a really nice, fresh, citrusy fish dish. Uh, here we have some uh, shio kombu, so this is a uh, seaweed that we soak in our agadashi. Really nice seaweed, gives that a lovely unami flavour. So that goes on top of the salmon now. So Chef, we have got some people asking uh, for a little introduction of yourself. Yes, so my name is, uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Colin Bucket. Uh, I've been in Singapore for five years now. Uh, I was originally at uh, Pollen by Jason Atherton at Gardens by the Bay for four and a half years. Uh, after four and a half wonderful years, I decided I needed a new challenge. Um, so I spoke to and had great conversations with the founding members, Mark and Luke. And once I heard about the 1880 concept, I was really thrilled and excited to join the club. And I've been with the club for since March. So, so let me finish this first dish for you. So we have the shield combo on the salmon. And then we're going to just dress it with some really nice little uh, little micro herbs that just complement the salmon dish. So this is a uh, purple shiso. And then we have little snow peas, snow pea uh, flowers. So all these flowers that you see here, I get them from uh, Edible Gardens, which is a local um, micro herbs, and they do micro herbs and they do um, organic uh, salad leaves. And I'm all as a chef, I'm all for uh, supporting local uh, local distributors. So I think that's important, you know, rather than getting them from overseas and getting them air flowing, you know, so. Let me finish off with some Granny Smith apples. 
So the Granny Smith apples just gives it that nice bit of texture, uh, nice crunchy texture, nice and fresh, okay? And then we finish it off with a uh, yellow mule. So a yellow mule is basically a sauce made with uh, pineapples, uh, mango, uh, horseradish, uh, fish sauce, coriander and chilli. And then we just finish it off on the side. So it gives it a nice fruity, spicy, to go complemented with the salmon. So here's our first dish. So we have cured salmon, uh, compressed pineapple, Granny Smith apples, yellow mule and shield kombu. Okay. So when might a member be able to order this? So this, yeah, so this, so a menu we've got, what we've got in the 1880s is an all day dining menu. So uh, it will start from 11.30 uh, to 11 o'clock at night. Uh, they can have it in any area of the, uh, of the club. We have the members, uh, members lounge, members dining. Uh, and then after the new year, we're going to open the terrace. So the all day dining menu, as I say, it's very uh, approachable. It's very elegant. You can have this dish in the morning, you can have it in the evening. Uh, and then in the evening we're going to have more um, sharing concept dishes. So we'll have like whole roasted duck, sucking pig, uh, you know, roasted short rib for two. You know, all about sharing concept. It's all about sharing. Right? So let me put you on to the next dish. So we'll get three dishes for you. So this will be the first dish, the salmon. Then we're going to do uh, one of my favourites. This is my take on a, a beef tartar. So we've got uh, rump, uh, D-cup rump beef. Uh, then we've got capers. We've got cornichons. And then we have uh, charcoal oil. So the charcoal oil, oil once the oil, once we've finished um, char grilling the, the beef at the end of the night, we have the, the white coal, and then we infuse it into olive oil, and then we infuse that coal for two days. So it gives that nice smoky barbecue flavor. So we dress the, 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 the beef, ta -ta, a little bit of salt in there. And then we have some hot sauce. We make, we make everything at 1880, we make ourselves all the sauces, the pastas, the ice creams. We try to make as much as we can in-house. So this is a, we call this a hot sauce. So this is made with um, uh, smoked, we have smoked, um, uh, smoked uh, onions, smoked chili, smoked tomatoes, uh, beef stock, uh, chilies, and sherry vinegar. So it just gives that nice little bit of spice to the beef tartare, and the charcoal gives it that smoky flavor. So we give that on, mix all that up. So at, at 1880, you know, the, the menu is all about, it's about familiar dishes, but with a with, with my kind of twist on it, you know. Yeah, I want when you read the menu, it looks very familiar dishes, but we like to add a little touch to it, you know. So instead of uh, you know the familiar um, you know beef tartare, it's just the steak. That's when I add the charcoal, the charcoal oil. I add the uh, I add the quail yolk. So there's a little quail yolk in there, straight in there. So this is a little quail yolk. It's been um, it's basically been uh, soaking in the charcoal oil because um, eggs are a porous. So the the egg yolk, the quail egg, just sits in the charcoal oil for a couple of days. So even it has, it also has it's got that nice smoky flavour, yeah. So here we have here we have um, so here we have a little garnish. These are uh, pickled yellow mustard seeds. So we pickle the yellow mustard seeds in a white balsamic uh, water and sugar, and we pickle them for two days. So that gives that nice mustard because mustard mustard goes lovely with, with beef. So we have that. It's all the classic, classic elements to uh, what goes nice with beef, but a little, as I say, a little twist on it. So these are just raw shallots on here. Then we have uh, kiracha mustard. So kiracha is a Japanese mustard. So we uh, mix this kiracha mustard with uh, sayako miso and uh, sparkling water. And then we just put, so this is quite hot. What does the sparkling water do to? It just gives it a nice, just gives it that nice freshness. So we make this, we make this uh, every day before service. So this is just really nice and spicy. And I love, you know, since being in uh, since being in uh, Asia, I love, uh, you know, I love Asian ingredients. You know, I really love it. They're an amazing flavour. So then we have uh, some. So normally a lot of chefs use, um, you know, they use uh, toast. Very traditional to serve toast with beef tartar. So instead of using toast, I, I do these little chips. So we make, we make these uh, we fry these every every morning. So these are little um, potatoes. I've just been cut finely, and then we fry them gently. Potato So you've got that. Yeah. So you've got that lovely. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. You got that lovely uh, that texture that the, the toast would give, you know. Okay, so put in there. And then we finish it off with some uh, some mustard. So again, these are from Edible Gardens. So these are mustard frills. So you got all these beautiful flavors, you know. You got the smokiness. You've got the um, the crispiness. You've got so many textures going on there. So you, and then you got you got the mustard. So you get the mustard. You've got the miso. You have the uh, sayako mustard. So I'm just finish off here. So since we've been open, we've only been open a week, and this has become a really popular dish, the beef tartar. 
you know, they get a lot of great feedback just because it's uh, the originality of it, you know. So a little bit of, yeah, it's a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, the sturdy leaves on there. And then we just finish it off with a charcoal oil, just to give that extra smokiness. And that's it guys, so that's our second dish. Beef, uh, aged beef tartar with karacha uh, miso mustard, crispy potatoes and a uh, quail egg. So next we move on to the uh, main courses. So this is one of the um, one of our main courses we have on the on the menu, the all day dining menu. So again, this is available seven days a week. Okay, so this is going to be my uh, last dish to show you guys. Uh, so this is going to be a um, uh, corn fed chicken dish. So uh, again, just having really loads of Asian uh, ingredients go through the dish. This is a corn-fed chicken breast we get from France. Uh, we brine it in a 10% salt uh, brine. Uh, we brine it for about uh, 50 minutes. And that basically just flavors it and tenderizes the chicken. Uh, then we steam it in uh, chicken fat. So we get chicken skin. We render the chicken skin down so you get that lovely chicken fat. And then we uh, sous vide the chicken breast and it's on chicken, uh, chicken fat with garlic and thyme. And then we soup them, we, uh, we steam it for uh, 63 degrees for about 30 minutes. How do you get that skin all crisp? Yeah, so basically, so after we, after we poach it, uh, after we poach it, we stick it on the, the grill with a little uh, weight on it, and that basically just keeps the skin really crispy. So you've got a really crispy skin, and then the chicken's really soft because we've uh, brined it and we've steamed it. So here we have, uh, so this is uh, aubergine. So this aubergine's uh, been, um, it's been over the char grill, so you um, put the aubergines over the char grill and you smoke, you smoke them for about uh, 30 minutes. Uh, and then you, uh, once it's been smoked, you take the outer black skin off it and then you, uh, and then we soak it in uh, black tea and uh, bonito. Uh, so you get that nice dynamic and that nice smokiness of the black tea. And then we, um, and then we finish it off in a uh, bonito stock and then fukake. And then here is a little um, poached, uh, this is a little pickled um, aubergine. So this has been uh, pickled in uh, lemon oil, uh, soy sauce and brown rice vinegar. So we uh, soak it in this pickle uh, for um, overnight and then we water bath it and then we just keep uh, infusing it for two days. So you've got that nice smokiness of the aubergine, you've got the nice uh, acidity of the, the pickled lemon oil um, aubergine. And then we finish it off with some uh, nice local uh, Carolina leaves. You know? So that just give that nice bit of uh, freshness now. And then we have a then we have an aubergine puree. So this aubergine puree is um, diced aubergines. Uh, we coat them in rice flour and then we deep fry them. And then we soak them in a uh, agadashi, which is a dashi stock made with kombu seaweed, uh, shio dashi, uh, sesame, soya, and ginger. And this just gives it nice. Uh, Lovely creaminess to the dish. Okay. So it's like aubergine three ways. So really nice aubergine. Yeah, you got aubergine three ways. You know, you got nice uh, aubergine smoked nagadashi, pickled aubergine, and then a, a nice smoked aubergine, and then it's just finished off with a, a chicken, a warm chicken vinaigrette, which is made with um, uh, chicken wings, Madeira, shallots, garlic, star anise, and then it's got uh, black, uh, sorry, uh, brown rice vinegar, uh, sesame, and soy, and that's just to finish off the chicken. Okay. And that's it guys, one of our one of our main course dishes at eighteen eighty. So we've got corn fed chicken, um, a roasted uh, smoked aubergine with bonito and black tea, pickled aubergine, aubergine puree and local calling local greens. Okay, here we go guys. So some of your some of the dishes we got at eighteen eighty. If you'd like to try these dishes then please come to eighteen eighty, come as a member. Uh, we're open seven days, we're doing amazing food, uh, really a nice flavorful, seasonal, uh, original uh, and that's it guys, thanks very much, thanks for coming, take care. Um.